In Climate Watch, scientists announced Tuesday Earth's carbon dioxide level has hit a record high. Research conducted in Hawaii shows the amount reached over 400 parts per million in May. That is the highest seasonal peak on record since observations began 61 years ago. The data was compiled by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Peter Tans is a senior scientist at the Earth System Research Laboratory of the National and Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. He joins me now from Boulder, Colorado. Peter, thank you so much for being with us. First My off, pleasure. what is expected to happen if carbon dioxide levels continue to rise at these rates? Both effects are very dire, actually. No what the CO2 and also the other greenhouse gases, what they do in the atmosphere. They retain heat additional over uh, what it used to be like uh, two centuries ago. And this extra heat will warm the oceans, will then warm the continents, will be more water vapor in the atmosphere, more energy, therefore. So we might get more extreme events. Sea level will rise. Uh, Migrate, mass migrations might take place because sea level is rising or we're having trouble growing crops in the places where we used to grow them. It, it spells a lot of trouble. And Peter, the research shows that concentrations of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere have increased steadily at least for the past seven years. So what factors are contributing to such steep carbon dioxide increases within such a short time, and especially during a time when we're supposed to know better? Yeah, we do know better, actually. But uh, the last decade, the rate of CO2 increase has been at a record high. And we know that this is due to fossil fuel emissions of CO2. We burn coal, oil, and natural gas, and that releases CO2 into the atmosphere. That is also at a record high. The two are directly related. And so why? when the CO2 measurement started in 1958 by Dave Keeling of the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, the typical increase was 0.7 ppm per year, and now it's 2.2. And it's, it's directly related to fossil fuel burning. But why then are we burning so many more fossil fuels? I thought there was a global attempt to put a cap or at least steady that. Well, there are plans to do that, but they obviously have not been successful at this point. Last year, we burned more than at any, in any other year, by about two and a half percent, I believe it was. So the highest monthly mean carbon dioxide level typically occurs in May, is that correct? But the NOAA yes. report noted the amount of carbon dioxide increase this past May was well above the average for the past decade. So why did we see such a steep increase just this year? Well, there is, there is a second reason. Uh, the first reason is that we're burning more fossil fuels, but it, that is going up more slowly. The second reason is that there is a year-to-year -year variation in CO2 in the atmosphere correlated with El Nino. So we are now in a fairly mild El Nino, and that typically leads to faster CO2 growth in the atmosphere. So the two add up, fossil fuels and a mild El Nino adds up to record increases. All right, so now that we know the bad news, give us some good news, please. Give us some hope. Moving forward, what needs to be done to reverse the steady increase in carbon dioxide emissions? I mean, I know you're going to say simply burn fewer fossil fuels, but how do we get that done? First, I should say something about a country that managed to decrease its per capita emissions by a factor of two. They cut them in half in 20 years. This happened in Sweden. When, from the mid-70s to the mid-90s, they cut their emissions in half. So, so we need to be doing what Sweden is doing. What is Sweden doing there, right? There, there is proof that it can be done. Now, the good news is that we are much better at it now. Uh, uh, solar and wind are already, in many cases, competitive with burning fossil fuels. 
So their S, the price is basically the same. Furthermore, uh, we can also uh, turn cars, a fleet of cars and trucks into electric vehicles. This would greatly improve health, the, the, the air quality in, in, in urban environments. This would all be positive. So why aren't we doing this? That's the big question. We know what to do, and we know how dire our future is if we do nothing. That's what I find so befuddling. I don't understand it, Peter. What did Sweden have to do to make this big change? Did they do a wholesale swap from fossil fuels to wind and solar energy? Well, the biggest there, they did two big things. One was uh, they put great emphasis on energy efficiency and conservation with technologies that was already available in the 1970s. And like I said, we can do better now. The second thing was they actually started to introduce nuclear energy to make electricity. That was the second factor. And those two combined led them to cut their emissions in half. All right. Well, the rest of the world needs to take a page out of Sweden's playbook because uh, this is getting serious. Peter, yeah, serious. thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Okay, my pleasure.